with Viewpoint, the program of personalities, politicians, and perspectives. And boy, we got a nice personality this morning. And great perspective on history and so forth. We're going to talk about that because it's real important. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge Mrs. Busby. Good morning, my dear. Good morning. Did you have a nice week, Bill? Yeah, well, uh, just Did like you do anything exciting, like go to Broadwell? Or? Yes, I went to Burton View, Beeson, and Broadwell. But more importantly, I flew over Beeson, Broadwell, and Burton View. Uh, you just jumped right in there as if I would fed you that line. Yeah, well, you did. I read it right <laughs> off this paper here. Well, which brings me to kudos, which we always try, Mrs. Mosby, we always try to start the viewpoint with a kudo for some individual or some organizations uh, here, you know, in Lincoln Logan. But this morning, with your permission, my dear, I'm going to uh, move out of uh, the county and move south to the uh, great town of Springfield, the capital city. Uh, there's a group down there that are the Springfield chapter of the Experimental Aircraft Association. And uh, they recently had, uh, and they do that periodically, uh, uh, the World War II aircraft, primarily the B-17 they've had down there. Uh, which, uh, for the benefit of those who are out there in the ether world don't know, it was a very, very famous bomber during the Second War. Uh, made thousands of them, and there are now 12 flyable left in the entire world. And uh, one of them is owned by the folks up at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the Experimental Aircraft Association. And so uh, they brought it down, and uh, as a lot of people know, uh, I was gifted a flight by my dear friend, uh, Richard Martin, uh, Friday. And while down there Friday, we were conversing with the folks, and, and uh, they said, uh, do you want to go to uh, Chicago when we go? Did I? Imagine <laughs> 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 me an old joke, would I, would I? <laughs> anyway, uh, so they got my name and phone number and so forth. And uh, Labor Day morning, about noon, they called, and they said, we moved the departure up from Tuesday to this afternoon. Would you like to go with us? We'd be honored to have you go. Well, I said, what time do I be there? <laughs> so, oh, now, now don't say that. You were very humble, and you said, oh, dear, I have to check my schedule and yeah, see no. whether I have time. I said, tell me the hour I'm a very there. busy man. There was, no, there was no humming and hawing about <laughs> that one. <laughs> anyway, uh, bottom line. They took four of us, WW2 vets. Uh, one was from the Navy and two were from the Army and myself from the Air Corps. Uh, just four of us. And they took us up there uh, when we reported in Springfield. And so the appointed time while we took off and jumped that V-17 and flew and I got to fly up in the nose, sitting in the bombardier chair for the most part, which was really, uh, really a fun thing. So I snapped your pictures. We went over Lincoln Logan and uh, we uh, wended our way north, mostly following I-55, and it was a fun flight. The weather was really, really neat, and uh, it was a great experience. The two older fellows, by the way, you know, I'm, as, as is pretty well known, I'm going to be 90 next month. I was the baby of that foursome. <laughs> there was a 93-year-old black gentleman who had driven, if you recall now, at that time, that time in our history, uh, our uh, armed forces were segregated, uh -huh. and he was attached to, a, uh, attached to a transportation unit, and he drove trucks in uh, Africa, North Africa, and all around there, and then uh, up into uh, Italy. And the one fellow was in the Navy, and he was in the South Pacific, and the other guy was in the Army. And uh, so, those guys were all older than I am. <laughs> so, it was unusual to be at 90 and be the baby of the group. Yeah, really, really. <laughs> but, yeah. The important now here's the real thing you know all of us have, have seen or uh, read about uh, kindnesses that people have done for people at grocery lines or somebody anonymous so-and-so will pick up the check at the dinner well we ask uh, or the guy that was associated with the Springfield Aviation Group asked where we should oh by the way they took a van north to Romeoville to bring us back so that was you know that was a big deal round trip so one of the fellows asked... Well, did you think they were going to leave you like puppies in the country or I something? I was ready to go to the air... Uh, to, I was ready to get transportation to go to the train and come back if I had to. <laughs> I, I was going to go. It didn't make any difference. Anyway, uh, 
one of the gentlemen asked about a place to eat, and a place was recommended to us. So we went over there, and by the way, the Springfield group was going to pick up the tab for the dinner and so forth. And I said, gosh, you know, we've done quite a bit, but no, that's what we want to do. Well, the wait waitress came with a tab and informed the representative from Springfield that the fellow who had told us where to go to eat had picked up the tab for the group. See? Picked up the tab for a table of seven. There's still kindness of what you know, isn't there. Total, total stranger. Uh, Bless his heart. So Harold Trapp was wrong. People aren't uh, any damn good. <laughs> <laughs> People aren't. Well, he's had he's had occasion to be very right about that too. <laughs> Let's yeah. not just it was sell famous, Judge Short. Famous friend of mine and, and, and a noted uh, jurist and scholar here, and he was a funny gentleman. And he said one time, oh, by and large, I've given considerable thought and I've come to the conclusion that people are just no damn good. <laughs> <laughs> so Harold was wrong in this case, All right, guys? Total stranger picked up the tab. Hey, we got to get to work. Why don't you introduce our guest? Well, I'd like to do that. You know, um, she's an awful nice girl, a cute little thing. You've got some silly things here that your friend Lois Harvey sent you. Yes, I have. i got all kinds of things. It's all about... Uh, it's all about retirement that Anne's, uh, that uh, Lois sent me. And uh, someday I'm going to retire and find out what the heck it's about. I've heard it could be nice. <laughs> Anne Mosley is with us. And she is the assistant director at the Lincoln Heritage Museum, which is on the, the grounds of Lincoln College and in the big new building that's there on Nicholson. And um, they're in the process of moving mm -hmm. uh, daunting, daunting activity. Process. I can't imagine how one moves a whole museum. The thing that I think is so neat about it is that you're now going to have enough room, Anne, to show some of these things that you have because the former museum was in such a small area that most of your things that people would so appreciate were hidden in a vault. And thank God they were in a vault, because when the fire happened, they'd have been gone if it mm. hadn't been for the vault. Mm. And that fire was how many years ago, Bill? Well, that was the administration building uh, uh, that we lost, which is now the site of the Johnson Center for the Performing Arts. And uh, that fire was, oh, golly. Oh, my kids were It was a long little. time ago. I don't want to be... Yeah, ever so long ago, but disastrous. it would have been such a disaster if those mm -hmm. things had been gone now. We plain people get to come and see them. Tell us about your move and about some of the things that you'll be able to display that people that have been unseen by the human eye. Mm. <laughs> well, we've been very fortunate um, having a very supportive administration and then a very supportive alumni group and faculty um, support as well. And our new museum is very nice and it is a breath of fresh air. Um, our old museum uh, as I can say now we closed last Friday which was a sad event um, yes uh, that we want to emphasize that's just a temporary <laughs> closing yes there was a headline appeared now that that could be a little misleading they want to make sure that they understand that temporary that museum mm -hmm. is not going to close no we're just preparing for our, our new uh, our new digs as I like to say yeah um, well the uh, old museum mm -hmm. was put in place in 1970 and the cases in there were bought in 1970. Um, so when we were planning this new museum we were looking at upgrading a lot of our display cases, um, the space, and we were going to focus very heavily on our items which we still do and are going to continue to do because the items tell the story. Mm -hmm. The items that we currently um, had on display uh, told a variety of different stories but they were cramped and we weren't able to tell the full story of the items and of Lincoln's life and of individuals who lived in Lowton County. So what we planned on doing in this new museum and what we are pr currently putting into place are um, a theme. Things that students can learn from Lincoln's life and giving a better explanation of the items that we have on display. Um, for example, we have a uh, one of the two last remaining copies of Lincoln's mortality poem. Uh, the mortality poem was written by Abraham Lincoln 
during mm. certain periods of his life where he was depressed or was trying to get over a struggle in his life and this poem was written by a Scottish poet but he at the time when he first learned about this poem he had no idea who wrote it he didn't find out until he became president and started talking to other individuals who had an interest in poetry and he later found out that uh, this Scottish poet uh, was known as William Knox and the poem that we have in our collection is the poem that Lincoln hand wrote and he wrote the um, author of the poem on the piece of paper so mm -hmm. this is when Lincoln was president and the other uh, mortality poem that Lincoln wrote in his own hand is owned by a private collector and these are the only two in existence which we haven't been able to display and will be very fortunate to display in the new museum you know surely architecturally and from a construction standpoint this must have been uh, quite an undertaking because everything has to be just so humidity wise and light wise and all kinds mm -hmm. of things come into play it's not like repainting your living room and deciding where to set the couch <laughs> is it <laughs> no uh, you definitely have to be very very careful a number of these items are over 200 years old um, a lot of our Civil War items are over 150 years old and they have to be handled with great care um, especially a lot of the paper items that tend to deteriorate a lot quick, quickly over time versus a wooden or ceramic item so your uh, average teapot from 1860 um, you have to be very very delicate with it and then with a piece of paper, you have to store it a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the manuscripts that we've had, we've had to encase them, um, which is a, it's a long process, but it's very beneficial for our items and helps them to stay in place during the move. Um, so when we go to move these items, um, we have special boxes we put them in and we take great care in moving them over. Do I'd like you to just mention something about our existing museum though. It's just recently, notwithstanding, however modest it is as far as because of size and so forth, we just can't do any more. Uh, but it was 18th, uh, uh, it was marked 18th as, as far as a uh, uh, college or what what category. It was rated very highly in the country. Uh, we were rated um, 17th oh. out of a list of 30 colleges and universities around the world uh, as being one of the top uh, museum uh, museums at universities. Well, Is that. that right? Even as modest as we are at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Think so, what it'll be next. Yeah. Well, we're hoping to do a lot more and have a lot more people come and see us so then we can uh, make that number uh, go even lower and be rated one of the top five museums right. at universities. And we have a close connection with the uh, Presidential Museum in Springfield and they think very highly of us and so we hope that they'll help us spread the word as well uh, because our museum uh, at its current location um, before the move we were quite small and we were kind of hidden in the back corner of a library mm -hmm. um, which is nice because we're next to a, a academic source but we were kind of hidden from the public in our new location we are out in the open we have banners that will show where we are at and we will be a lot easier to find which will be really right. exciting but i always took when we had people come to visit us from minnesota i always took them over there to see the museum because it was a nice museum surely it must be of benefit to you to be so close to springfield and the presidential museum there it is beneficial, but it's also beneficial for them because we have a lot of items that they don't have in their collection oh, that, okay? that they ask to borrow. And we tend to loan items out to other museums because at the old museum, we didn't have enough space to display everything. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted people to have the chance to see these items. Mm -hmm. So we have loaned them out to the Indiana State Museum, the Presidential Museum, and currently on display, uh, at the Reagan Museum out in California, they are displaying some of the Lincoln home items, uh, wow. which is really neat. Uh, so people know us from throughout the nation, 
and we'll have a chance to actually show what we have here in Lincoln, Illinois and be able to tell a more broader story and not have to loan our items quite frequently because we'll be able to show more. Right. Our listeners might be interested in the story of, of the folks who are developing our displays and so forth. They're right here in central Illinois. We're going to take a, a quick a commercial break right now. Then we're going to come right back and we're going to be having a, having a nice visit this morning with Ann Mosley. Uh, a very, very neat young lady. My wife just thinks she's about the next thing to bread pudding. <laughs> and uh, we're, had to have her, we're just happy to have her on campus working with Ron Keller, our esteemed director uh, there. So let's take a commercial break right now, Mr. Ash. <laughs> 